Hello, how is it going? It is Fake Girl coming at you once again with another Legends of Ruin Terror video. Blast from the past today, guys. I am playing Noxus Ezreal. Uh, this is an old school deck, really old school, and one that hasn't been seen for a while. Probably for a reason. It's probably not going to be the most effective deck in the meta in terms of the matchup spread. However, as long as we're not versing versing the like free old Targon ramp version of Rillian Soul, I'm actually quite impressed with this deck. I don't mind it against the Lux Aurelian Soul list, and I'll tell you what, outside of that, I'm enjoying this against the Bilgewater Burn, I'm enjoying this against Scout decks and other aggro decks such as Nightfall, and uh, it's kind of like when we verse the uh, the free old uh, Targon version of Aurelian Soul is almost a throwaway, but a bit more of a throwaway game is versing the Shadow Isles control decks right now that are running like uh, Lidros, Revitalizing Roar and Atrocity. So basically, as long as I'm avoiding the free old side of things, I really like this against every other matchup. And some of the card choices I'm going with, Tribeam and Populator, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Start off with one copy, bumped it up to two copies, and <laughs> ultimately went to three copies as I realized that card's really cool. We have quite a fair bit of three drops, so it's not hard to level it. And having one in the opening hand is great, so being able to guarantee that more often is pretty cool actually. And uh, it provides tempo on a deck that lacks it as we run very few followers. Another card choice I'm going with at the moment is going to be Death's Hand over cards such as Calling Strike specifically. I'm not sure if Death's Hand was used in the past, but I'm using it now. It's a more efficient card and it just does what Calling Strike needs to do while providing chip damage. You could argue Calling Strike hits good targets such as the Warding Stones. However, as I said, against those decks, it's already a throwaway game. So I'm just going to improve my matchup against everything else. Um, outside of that, another reason why I really wanted to visit Noxious Ezreal, Noxian Guillotine. Really like that card. It's going to smack against the Lux of Million Souls and just does crazy things i had two copies of it originally i've trimmed it down to one as you find the most value from that card when you find a single copy so i didn't want to uh filter my deck too much of noxian guillotines i guess in the end but regardless let us go have a few games here today i just want to mention i am streaming over on twitch monday tuesday friday and saturday be sure to go check me out i also will leave a uh, deck code in the description you guys have a fantastic day and i will see you soon this doesn't feel very favorable I think I actually want to full mulligan here. I want to find like Tribeam and like Draven, House Spider. Progress day is actually kind of fun to see. I'll drop him a little bit of a Brahma moat and we'll go from there. I mean, keeping Thermobeam is kind of cute for uh, dealing with the, you know, the warding stones. Oh, that's great. Start to buff this. Yeah, I have to attack here. He obviously wants to play Catalyst, so obviously I've been punished if he has it. Although, like, that would have been really cute to have not swung there. But for the chance that he doesn't have it, then there you go. You know, it depends how aggressive you have to be. And with this deck, you have to kind of be a bit aggressive. Um, Death's Hand and that. He's going to six. Six is like whatever. Oh, what are we reversing? Okay. What are we looking for here? Yeah, I'm down with tempoing out an Ezreal. It's gonna be a tempo Ezreal in an unfavored matchup, guys. I think this is strictly the play, especially since we drew another one. There's like less of a punish. Um, we just go in there with the swing here. I don't truly have a way to punish this. Let's see what he does here. Trundle. Okay. So we will go ahead and clear that for sure. 
Probably just Death's Hand plus Ravenous Flock is acceptable here. And if he has another troll chance, you know, I can still technically clear it with other removal. I'm thinking about doing something crazy here. I'm going to clear the warding stones, leaving him at a total of... What? He'd be on 8 mana next turn, right? No, not even. 7. 8. Yeah, 8. This is great. Because I want to see if I can catch him off guard with the tri-beam. Damn it. We still go for it here though. Oh, he's summoning a five cost? I'll take that. We'll see if he wants to swing here. Probably not. The idea here is that I kind of go super aggressive, right? If he can heal it, that's going to really suck. But he didn't have it before and he still doesn't have it. Now we get a pretty insane open attack. So I'm pretty happy about that. And I'll definitely be taking it. Probably wants to ruinate me, right? If he passes, I will end the turn. Warding Stones is offering me something to farm. I'm probably still on the sideline of wanting to level up Ezreal. We do have enough draw to most likely find the next Ezreal, so we have to, just have to be kind of efficient here. On the other hand, I am kind of threatening a fair bit of damage. Regardless, I think I still will go for the Warding Stones here. I will target it just with the Mystic Shot to level up Ezreal potentially. And I think I'll just pass at that point. I'll do the one Mystic Shot to see how he reacts. So I probably will end the turn. Although I could be considering rummaging. Maybe perhaps that's a good play. Ideally it would be better if I did it after Ezreal flips. I'll see exactly what he does here though. Mm. Spider. Looks like he's going to be setting up for Ice Quake. I'm actually going to go ahead and see if I can flip Ezreal. It's not quite a flip. It's not quite a flip. If I can flip Ezreal in this turn, that's going to be really crazy. All right, I'm going to do something a little wild here. I'm going to Paralyzing Bite and end the round. He's going to immediately open up with Ice Quake and I am going to... Oh. Never mind, things just got a little bit easier. I thought he would have gone for the Ice Quake. I find it hilarious that Ezreal is no longer... Vulnerable. No, he, she, he was never vulnerable. We're passing for now. 
Um, after seeing this, I'm tempted just to kind of uh, play Chump Womp. Start cycling the deck. Get some chip damage off. Look for the next uh, Ezreal. However, Ezreal is not even actually vulnerable. Why am I concerned? He just does a weird play like this. He's most likely not even going to swing at my Draven, so I'm not even going to be concerned about discarding this and this. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to save my burst speed spells for now. Yep, perfect. It's actually just a pretty crazy open attack. No reason not to just kind of open swing. Drag this so I guarantee getting a spinning axe and drag this to kind of force him to block into these guys. Feels really good. I think we're in a super good spot right about now. This attack connects. Cool, so he's going to be maybe going for a re re revitalizing roar. Let's allow us to go through. Uh, Never Glade Collector, hopefully that damage from that isn't relevant. I don't think it will be. Okay, so here's where we just like start playing our stuff, right? One. I could probably even do this at burst speed, so there's no issues at all. Two, four, six, eight. We can't necessarily do it at burst speed, but yeah, we would have definitely had it. Like he's on two mana. I don't know what I'm trolling. <laughs> I'm actually trolling. Sitting there counting that up. Feels really good to win like really unfavorable matchups sometimes. Not gonna lie. Because you take like, kind of like take a little bit of a risk. Regardless, I think we played that pretty well. Perhaps our opponent drew kind of on port poorly but we um took advantage of the mistakes that he made like i'm not sure if he actually had ruination or not or ways of playing ice quake but we totally abused it by playing the Nox noxian guillotine immediately so we could flip ezreal immediately so point being he probably didn't have any removal in hand so unlucky for him and it feels good to <laughs> take it off the trundle so I do favor, I do I do like Draven Ezreal into some of these mid-range decks. Mostly because of Ravenous Flock. That card's extremely powerful. Although we do have a lack of uh, units. Since I've been recently cutting quite a lot of units. We find chip damage from other sources. Uh, Noxian Guillotine is kind of, going to kind of be a dead card here. I am always going to keep Tri-Beam if offered it in the opening hand. Because I'll most likely find value from it eventually. So if he develops uh, War Chef, someone happy to Death's Hand, the 2-3, 2-2, uh, two, two, sorry. But if he does something else, I will probably develop House Spire since we just found that. Well, this is kind of interesting. Hmm. This is tough. I don't know. What, what's correct? Is it like playing House Spider probably just correct? Since he's most likely not gonna... If he develops another one drop, then... Good on him. This shuts down his attack completely. That is some uh, textbook Rangers Resolve nonsense going on here, isn't it? I guess I'll prefer not to play the Rangers Resolve. Let's do this. <laughs> I can't afford to just completely get wiped from Rangers. Even if he doesn't have any, he's just baiting. There's no way you attack there, right? I'll take my free damage. My shield is 
doing? Do I not just like death sand this? I think I death sand this. It's fair enough. He's going to protect his unit so he can get value from uh, his uh, bannerman coming up. So we do actually have the Rangers resolve, so we were quite smart to play around it. I'm surprised he actually didn't just use it to save the 2 2 there. Guess in, in hopes he'd find a bit more value, right? More than happy to stun something if he develops something. If not, I just end the turn here 100%. That's actually pretty good for us. I will again take my free damage. What? This is splendid block for us. Wow. Um, feels like a pretty easy sentry into Ravenous Flock. If he doesn't have a way, we'll see what exactly what he does here to protect it, right? Barrier, single combat. I guess I can submit to it, right? He obviously doesn't have, uh, he obviously doesn't have, um, I should let this go through, right? But what I was gonna, what I was gonna say is he obviously doesn't have Rangers Resolve. Cause I wonder if he might have just done that instead. We'll slap this unit, keep his unit under control. Uh, keep his bot under control, sorry. That's like really, literally the aim of the game here. Got a fat tri-beam coming up. It's kind of pog. House spy is a decent draw. <sighs> All right, so what do I do here? I can make him play into a. Uh... <laughs> Actually, no, we haven't got enough mana. I can only Noxian plus Mystic. I realized I didn't have enough mana to play double Noxian Guillotine. Otherwise, I would have gone for the, the double clear here, right? My hand's kind of looking a bit gassed out. Not gonna lie. It's a pretty good top deck. I'll take my free damage. Plays another dude, I'ma play this. And that's kind of pog. We can start to take over the board here. I wonder if I can be the aggressor now. If let's say if I ignore this for a turn and we do a big power swing next turn. Perhaps I can be an aggressor now. <laughs> this deck doesn't run Radiant, so I don't need to be concerned about that. What I should have done maybe was considered passing on my turn. That would have been pretty smart to have passed and then played the tri beam. Ooh, that would have been pog. In hindsight, that could have actually won us the game.
Rally? I am down to a little bit of an awkward situation where he could have lethal against me on the open. Nah, it's a pretty good top deck. Never mind. So we can pass for now. I wonder if I should slam these mushrooms into his deck. We're not going to do that just yet. I want to see if he's willing to challenge here. Yeah, this seems reasonable, right? Mm, I could be mystic shotting his face, actually. What am I doing? I could have tanked a little bit more damage there. At the same time, like, we could win other ways. Like, this is probably just going to be a bit of a game over. Not going to lie. Oh, we just disconnected for a sec. We're back. Hello? Yeah, like, if I don't find some sort of lethal here, then I don't know. Pog. I think we had one. We had that one turn where I should have considered uh, uh, definitely passing instead of attacking with a one-one. It was free damage, but there was also an ability there to outplay my opponent. Like that was dealing. That was summoning a five-cost unit. Tribeam keeps proving to be really good. I've only got it as a one-off though, but damn, I want some more of it. For now, I don't think I will use extra copies of it, but it's a consideration for sure. It finds its rare niche only when you have it like in the opening hand, sort of. Like drawing into it later is never going to be as good, so having lots of copies of it actually ends up probably hurting your deck more. The one and only Mr. Bruce by God on some uh, classic aggro so let's keep a handful of removal we'll give it a shot see what happens I have my orders. yeah we're definitely going to thermobeam this this is all this matchup is going to be about like sustaining hp as we do have a bit of a hard time against aggro, I would say, in general. At least he's not a Swain variant. Okay, we'll just keep removing the stuff. Go and knocks you in favor. Okay. Pretty easy clear.
Went a bit quiet here as I was starting to concentrate. Okay, let's just attack here. So two, four, six, two, four, six. I think we just have lethal, right? I don't think it's an outplay here. It'd have to be a warning shot plus Noxian Fervor. Which I'm confident I could probably draw some cards here. If he's just gonna Noxian Fervor the same unit, I'm going to immediately stun it again. That should wrap it up. Gee, gee, man.